This is the Sabbath School lesson for the first quarter, 2022. Welcome to Lesson 9, Jesus the Perfect Sacrifice, ready for teaching on February 26. It's from the series In These Last Days, The Message of Hebrews. The author is Dr. Felix Cortez, who is Associate Professor of New Testament Literature in the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University. And I'm your reader for today, Dr. Percy Harold. Wednesday, February 23, The Cross and the Cost of Forgiveness. Read Hebrews chapter 9, verses 22 to 28. What does this passage say about the work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary? Hebrews 9, beginning at verse 22, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. Therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And, as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. The idea that the heavenly sanctuary needs cleansing makes sense in the context of the Old Testament sanctuary. The sanctuary is a symbol of God's government, as we read in 1 Samuel 4, verse 4. And that reads, So the people sent to Shiloh, that they might bring from there the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas were there, with the ark of the covenant of God. And 2 Samuel 6, verse 2, And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. And the way God deals with the sin of his people affects the public perception of the righteousness of his government, as we read in Psalm 97, verse 2. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. As ruler, God is the judge of his people, and he is expected to be fair, vindicating the innocent and condemning the guilty. Thus, when God forgives the sinner, he carries judicial responsibility. The sanctuary, which represents God's character and administration, is contaminated. This explains why God bears our sins when he forgives. In Exodus 34, verse 7, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Numbers, chapter 14, verses 17 to 19. And now, I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. The original Hebrew for forgiving, nos, N-O-S-E, in these verses means carrying or bearing. The system of sacrifices in the Israelite sanctuary illustrated this point. When a person sought forgiveness, he brought an animal as a sacrifice in his behalf, confessed his sins over it, and slaughtered it. The blood of the animal was dubbed upon the horns of the altar or sprinkled before the veil in the temple in the first apartment. Thus, the sins were symbolically transferred into the sanctuary. 
God took the sins of the people and bore them himself. In the Israelite system, cleansing from or atonement for sins occurred in two phases. During the year, repentant sinners brought sacrifices to the sanctuary, which cleansed them from their sin but transferred the sin to the sanctuary, to God himself. At the end of the year, on the Day of Atonement, which was the Day of Judgment, God would cleanse the sanctuary, clearing his judicial responsibility by transferring the sins from the sanctuary to the scapegoat, Azazel, who represented Satan. And we read about that in Leviticus 16, verses 15 to 22. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, bring its blood inside the veil, do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions, for all their sins. And so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting, which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. There shall be no man in the tabernacle of meeting when he goes in to make atonement in the holy place, until he comes out, that he may make atonement for himself, for his household, and for all the assembly of Israel. And he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it, and shall take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it on the horns of the altar all around. Then he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times, cleanse it, and consecrate it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions, concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat, and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land, and he shall release the goat in the wilderness." This two-phase system, represented by the two apartments in the earthly sanctuary, which were a pattern of the heavenly sanctuary, as we read in Exodus 25 verse 9 and Hebrews 8 5, permitted God to show mercy and justice at the same time. Exodus 25 verse 9 reads, According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. And Hebrews 8 verse 5, Who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Those who confessed their sins during the year showed loyalty to God by observing a solemn rest and afflicting themselves on the Day of Atonement, as we read in Leviticus 16, verses 29 to 31. This shall be a statute forever for you. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether a native of your own country or a stranger who dwells among you. For on that day the priest shall make atonement for you, to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest for you, and you shall afflict your souls. It is a statute for ever. Those who did not show loyalty would be cut off, as we read in Leviticus 23, verses 27 to 32. Also, the tenth day of the seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For any person who is not afflicted in soul on that same day shall be cut off from his people. And any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from a among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute for ever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening. From evening to evening you shall celebrate your Sabbath. And so to finish today. 
Think of what you would face if you had to face the just punishment for your sins. How should that truth help you understand what Christ has done for you? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.